Climate change is an unprecedented global problem. The emerging carbon finance market, with a potential for enormous profits, will play a critical role in helping to solve this problem. In a major advance toward understanding this new sector, the Center for Business and the Environment at Yale has published Carbon Finance, Environmental Market Solutions to Climate Change. Brian Garcia, Brad Gentry, and Eric Roberts developed and edited this important report. Brad Gentry, director of the Center for Business and the Environment at Yale. Well, I think in terms of the way I think about carbon finance, it really includes two concepts. One of them is we have the problem of climate change because there's been no price on carbon. Uh, anybody burning coal, anybody burning oil, anybody burning jet fuel or gasoline has been putting carbon into the atmosphere and not paying any price for it. So one part of carbon finance is monetizing the cost of carbon to the extent that it's causing pollution damage. How do we assign a price to that? And one way to do that is by limiting the amount of emissions, by putting a cap on the emissions. So if you put a cap on emissions, then different people who are using fuels, and many people need to continue to use fuels, um, will have to do something to reduce them. Sometimes you can buy more efficient engines, sometimes you can drive less, whatever. And then one of the ways you can meet your cap is in essence to pay other people to um, reduce their emissions um, and take credit for the reductions in their emissions that wouldn't have happened before. And if you're going to, for example, pay somebody else to build a wind farm, pay someone else to capture methane from farms, pay someone else to, to destroy industrial gases from their plant, um, you need to have a system of financing those projects, uh, financing the construction of the wind turbines, the construction of the digesters, the construction of the incinerators. Um, and so you bring those two concepts together into carbon finance. You're putting a price on carbon you're creating a commodity that's tradable, and you're creating a system that needs finance in order to create the offsets that can help people meet their regulatory obligations to reduce their emissions. Government carbon restrictions and binding international agreements are necessary components to a functioning carbon market. There's definitely a role for government in creating carbon markets. We know that through science that climate change is a human-induced phenomenon in that we have to achieve certain reductions of the emissions of greenhouse gases. And to the extent government can establish the goal and the targets based on science of where we need to be, uh, it effectively, through regulation, will establish targets uh, that we have to achieve. Now, once those targets are achieved and they're set in law, uh, then it's up to the market to figure out ways of achieving those targets. Now, there's always an ongoing role for government uh, to monitor and make sure that the market is operating correctly as it was intended, uh, as it was structured. Uh, there's always a role for government to make sure that the projects that investors are investing in and receiving carbon value from are in fact delivering the results that we expect of them. They're actually leading to a reduction of greenhouse gas emissions. So there's always an ongoing role uh, for, gov for government in the carbon markets. Cap and trade has become the industrial world's standard tool for addressing global warming. The government puts a cap on greenhouse gas emissions and issues permits to companies for the right to release carbon dioxide. So a cap and trade system is a system established uh, by government uh, with the intent of reducing uh, the level of greenhouse gas emissions over time. Now that cap uh, is established with a base year and the government wants to achieve over a number of years a certain reduction, uh, a reduction of CO2 emissions to achieve a goal. Um, what typically happens is here in the Northeast we have the Regional Greenhouse Gas Initiative that's established a cap and trade market, the first uh, market of its kind here in the U.S. In fact, several uh, weeks back, weeks ago, uh, the first trades in the market occurred and we have a price on carbon of $3. Now effectively what that means is if I'm a company that falls underneath this cap and I am emitting above what I should be emitting, then I'm now going to have to pay a price uh, for those emissions and it happens to be $3 per metric ton of CO2. Now if I'm a company operating underneath uh, that value, then I have the ability to sell back into the system and earn some uh, revenue. So a cap and trade system is a, a government uh, instituted standard or a requirement uh, for the market uh, to achieve a certain reduction of greenhouse gas emissions. 
Cap and trade systems don't exist without government. The best role for government in a cap and trade system is setting a cap, uh, enforcing the cap, and reducing the cap over time so that you actually get the incentives to reduce more completely over time. It then is important for the government to make sure that there are, there's information available around the market for the allowances, um, around the market for the trading that takes place across facilities under the cap, uh, and for helping to ensure that there are um, sufficient market structures so that the costs of trading are not too high. The joint degree program offered by the Yale School of Forestry and Environmental Studies and the Yale School of Management is preparing students to become leaders of the new low carbon economy. I think now is the great time to be at the Yale School of Forestry and Environmental Studies. The school is over 100 years old, so it has this tremendous legacy of trying to understand and apply scientific management principles to the planet. Um, to forest systems in particular, but lots of other things. Um, we have had a joint degree program with the School of Management for over 27 years where students have come in and said, we see an intersection between business techniques, business resources, and trying to solve environmental problems, and we want to explore those. Under Rick Levin, the president of Yale University, in the last several years, we've seen a renaissance at Yale uh, in thinking about how to be a sustainable institution, not only reduce our emissions of greenhouse gases, but also um, how to have more sustainable sourcing of food, how to have more sustainable uses of water and things like that. And that creates just a tremendous laboratory for learning on campus. So you have students not only studying from textbooks, but having students engaging with helping make Yale a more sustainable place and having students engage with the network that Yale has externally, not only of alums, but of leaders. And we're all about solving the problems that matter. How do we get students and faculty engaged in understanding the underlying issues, uh, the pressing environmental issues, and preparing environmental leaders to then go out into society and help us to solve the problems that matter? So we've actually had a long-standing history uh, of a joint business environment degree program here at Yale. The Center for Business and the Environment is a, a part of the new vision of accelerating Yale's uh, role in preparing business leaders to solve environmental problems. To obtain a copy of Carbon Finance, Environmental Market Solutions to Climate Change, visit yale.edu slash cbey slash carbon finance 2008. For more information about the Yale School of Forestry and Environmental Studies, visit environment.yale.edu.